Welcome back. We are going into the city this time. Not just any city though, it's gotta be the city of brotherly love, where you probably have spent most of your day shooting some b-ball outside of the school. Before that is, you got in one little fight and moved in with auntie and uncle in Bel Air? I wish I could put that song in the intro, but we would be copyrighted if that happened. So I'm Jacob Fisher and it's Friday, so it's Travel Friday. We're gonna talk about travel guides on where to go for under $500. We can't actually travel, so it's gotta be more of a guide right now. And we're choosing Philly, where it's always sunny, except it's not always sunny. It's actually kind of cloudy pretty often. We're gonna see if you can spend under $500 to stay there for five days. So let's break it down into flights, places to stay, and things to do like always. Philadelphia International Airport is an American hub, which means the cheaper flights will be from American. It's also a Frontier Airlines main route, so they'll be cheaper too. They are generally cheaper in the first place, Frontier and Spirit that is. It'll be 50 to $300 that I've found so far. Finding the best deal on flights is super important to make sure you keep that budget intact as much as possible, or just use points for the flights and then you don't actually pay any dollars. Of course, Philadelphia has good and bad times to go. Generally, you won't have a peak season because it's a major city and the only time that you'll find that is really bad to go is when it's cold. Nobody really wants to walk around a city when it's cold and windy. So November, you know, those winter and fall months, while it will be pretty in the fall, it will be colder. If you want colder months, go then. If you want a warmer months and walk around in warmer weather, then summer it is. Where you want to stay in Philly depends on your personal preference. A map will pop up right now showing the different neighborhoods in Philly. I'd recommend Center City. It's just closest to everything. You can also see more of the nightlife that happens. You are close enough that you can travel to Fishtown, Rittenhouse Square, or Chinatown, all within walking distance. Fishtown is further along. It's a bike ride more so than a walk, but definitely close enough for a morning jog on the Schuylkill River. Where to stay though? There are a million hotels in the city, I mean just tons of them. If you want to spend under $500 and either book the hotel with points or don't stay at a hotel and choose a hostel. Hilton offers a variety of hotels like the Doubletree, or you can stay with Marriott at hotels like Aloft. Both of them run a good amount of money and a good amount of points as well. They do have some decent locations though. Hyatt on the other hand, not having a bad location, but a place with a significantly less amount of points, 15,000. Hostels though are ranging from 18 to $26 for a dorm room or more for a private room. Let's just toss that into the plans. That'll account for the budget better. Our 500 budget, we aren't taking airlines into account because it just depends on where you're flying from. We can stay at the hostel for 25 a night, I'm saying. So right now our budget is at $400 left. I know, I know. Let's get on to some activities that you can do in Philly. Phillies and cities in general are all about experiencing what they have to offer, whether it be food or parks or different events. Generally, most of these experiences will cost more money than a beach vacation because a lot of times on the beach you just sit there. Food, I'm sure you could do for under $20 a day going to the grocery store. Plenty of them around Philly. Our cash is now at $300. The nice thing about being in a city is that you can generally walk or rent a bike to get from place to place. Everything is close together and it's not too hard. You don't need to rent an Uber for many situations. First thing you might want to do is check out the Rittenhouse Square Farmer's Market. It's on Saturdays from May to November and it's held from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. in the square. They have some amazing food there and locals from neighboring states and Pennsylvania bring their goods and foods and now lots of stuff that you could potentially buy and enjoy. Another thing that is a must is the Reading Terminal Market. Reading, spelled reading, pronounced Reading. I mean, there could honestly be a video dedicated to this market, and I'm sure there is, just not by me. Plenty of shops to get food and all kinds of food. There is an Amish bakery that serves, well, amazing food. They serve pancakes. I've had the pancakes there and they're so good. And every time I've brought some in there, they've also really enjoyed them as well. From there, you could head to Chinatown, which again is great food and more things you could buy. You have a decent amount of the budget left over. There's a dumpling place called Dim Sum Garden. It's really fantastic food and 
it's BYOB, so you don't need to pay for alcohol. However, they do charge you a uncorking fee, which I didn't know and I found out while I was there one time. Finally, one of the other places you have to go is South Philly Barbacoa. If you've watched the Netflix special Chef's Table, then you may have seen the owner of this on there. She is a fantastic chef and has some great food there. I haven't personally been, but it is on my bucket list for when I head back. Anyway, I think it's safe to say you could probably spend about $25 a person on eating out. So we'll knock down that budget now to $175. What else can you do in Philly? Well, let's see. Duck tour, ride a boat and a car at the same time. Art museum, 25 to get in. Pay what you want on the first Sunday and Wednesday nights. Liberty Bell, Eastern State Penitentiary, Independence National Historic Park, The Rocky Steps, Love Park, Boathouse Row. I mean, the list just goes on. You kind of need to just walk around and explore everything. I mean, yeah, sure, your feet will hurt at the end of it, but you will have seen so many sites. Maybe we pay for a few of them, let's say $50 for all of that, or just some of it. We now have $125 left over. What do we do with the rest? Really, it's up to you. If you want to spend more at the markets and get some souvenirs to take back home, do that. If you want to eat more food out, do that. But I couldn't quite figure out a way to spend another $125. It's not like we're going on a fishing excursion or a scuba diving adventure in Philadelphia. Philly just has a ton to offer you and it doesn't all have to be expensive. I would recommend checking it out at least once in your lifetime. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning a bit about Philadelphia and what there is to see in this place. If you did, then give this video a little like and subscribe if you want more travel videos like this. Until next time.